So the next series of tutorials is going to be covering the use of Catbot to integrate between CATIA and robot structural analysis and to also be able to do that uh, automatically in Mode Frontier. So Catbot is a piece of software that was written by Ian Co from Bureau Hapold for Proof Studio. Uh, you can always find the latest version by going to the code.google website and you can see the latest versions in here. So when you get Kappa, basically um, you put it into your main directory under workflow and you get uh, these files. And the main files are these .dll files which uh, are used by Kappa. The main executable which basically will analyze your CATIA model and then export the relevant geometry into a robot, construct a new model in robot and then put it through testing. You'll also get this batch file which will manually execute Catbot and then all your experiments are also going to be run in this workflow folder so you'll also have your CATIA files in here that you're testing uh, your mode frontier workflow will be in here and we'll give you a sample of that uh, with the uh, with Catbot and then you also have um, text files with your data and then also robot files of your models so what I want to do is uh, start with a model that I've already developed and kind of go through all the things that are necessary to be done in this CATIA model to put it through, um, through Catbot and into a robot. Uh, I won't go too much into the modeling that goes into this model because we've covered that in previous sessions. But basically, the model is set up. Uh, it's based on the previous model we had developed in the workshops set up with three floors, there's a core element, and then there's per this perimeter of the floor which is defined by an offset. And then I'm using a knowledge pattern to automatically instantiate a lot of the structural geometry, pretty much every all the structural geometry except for the core. And you can see that in here, I've used the knowledge pattern to instantiate a series of points along the facade. And then I use those points to create a series of uh, structural geometry uh, columns along the facade, the vertical members, perimeter beams along the facade, also beams connecting the facade to the core. And then I'm using state change, like we had done in the previous example to instantiate structure along the surface uh, in the form of these yellow struts and basically the state change parameters is one parameter for each facade panel and based on a value of 0, 1 or 2 it's instantiating either one diagonal brace, two braces forming an X or you see in this panel no braces. So we can run through the knowledge pattern very quickly. Again, I won't go into the specifics of this, but just to show you what's going on, uh, there's this piece of code that's generating the points along those boundaries. And then there's a series of code loops that generate the different parts of the structure. In here, we're getting the points that are necessary for each panel, points one, two, three, and four. And then we're using those points a few different times. Uh, in this bit of code, I'm creating uh, the beams that connect the facade into the core using a counting algorithm here. I'm also using those same points to create the columns and then also to create the perimeter beams and you can see it's the same function it's just using different points. So the columns use points 1 and 4 to create the vertical member and then points 3 and 4 to create the perimeter beam and finally, this is the part with the state change. And you can see here it's creating one line when the state is zero, two lines back to back when the state is one. And if it's two, it doesn't run any of this, so it doesn't make any struts.